So at this point, we are close to finishing our animation. So what I would like you to do is go into the appropriate folder in PhotoBucket, go to the library, go to Digital Art 1, go to Digital 1 Assignments, go to Assignment 5, and that is where you will post your storyboard sketches. Right? I'm going to go ahead and post it right to my instructor demonstrations, my storyboard sketch, just as a JPEG fewer than five megabytes. In fact, mine might be bigger than that. Let's make sure. You can always check your, oh no, it's tiny. You can always check the resolution uh, just right clicking and saying get info and see how much memory it's taking. All right, then the second thing we are going to upload when, once we finish the assignment, is what's called a final storyboard. So if this is the sketch, right, of the storyboard, then we're going to see, we're going to recreate a storyboard using layers from the frames of your animation. And the new thing here is we're going to use layout functions in Photoshop because we have to make sure that the, the space and the gutters in between each panel is even so it doesn't distract so we can read it it's just a very clean kind of comic book and then the third thing that we will post is our animated file which we have to learn to output from photoshop because a gif file is a strange online file type it only allows a maximum of 256 colors but because it's so limited in its colors its memory is tiny and because its memory is tiny it is the only online file format that can support animation scripts without an external program like Flash. So we have to tell Photoshop how to code that animation script into the GIF file before we save it. It's not enough to just save it as a GIF. And then when all that comes together, let's see if this is done, we will have submitted our assignment. Now remember, as long as you submit something by the critique deadline, you've acknowledged the deadline and you can always um, then later resubmit for, for a better grade. Okay, so where I left off, remember I have an assets file. I wanna open that up in Photoshop. That's where I'm, I'm setting up my shots. But then I also have a stage file and that's the one where I'll actually make the animation from. And I just put them side by side I'll make them the same size on the screen. So 50%, I'm zooming in on both of them. Right. And that way I can kind of see. Actually, I'll just do a little bit less. Okay. So at this point, it's a good idea to run a test. So like I said, I'm almost done with my animation. I have to now do the last row. And actually, I'm, I'm done with this. I just need to do from here and set it back to reset, what I call set to reset. And that's an optional thing because this could meet the parameters of the assignment just as it is right now. So let's, let's do an animation test on my stage. I have my timeline open at frame by frame animation. I use the, the layer window options and I say make frames from layers. Right? We've done this several times to test it. Now I'm going to set the timing, hold down shift. If I don't set the timing, it will play, but it will just play really fast. And if I actually output it without putting any timing on the frames, the GIF will run as fast as the computer is able to run it, right? Because we're setting no delay. So you want to set a delay. You want to set a timing for each frame. And you do that by selecting each frame by holding down shift, with the first one and then holding down shift, click the last one that selects all of them. And then just on one of them, select your timing. The default timing I usually animate with is 0.3, a little bit faster than three frames per second. But you can customize it for each segment, right? So for instance, if I want in my final animation for my bird to land a little bit quicker, maybe I do. 
So then these first few frames, yeah, basically the these frames two through five, I can change the timing and make it faster. I can change that to 0 0.2 seconds. And now you'll see that the bird comes in a little bit quicker. And I think you can go at least two decimal points. So if I think that that's too fast, I can try in between. So you can customize these and I can type in 0.25. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Didn't look jerky. Just kind of gliding in there. Well, and then you might think, well, if it works well for that, why don't I just do it for all of them? And you certainly can. So these are what are called in-frame adjustments. Once you have your frames outputted, you can play with the timing. You can play with what eyeball is turned on where. And I'll show you that. A little bit but right now my concern is how do I um, get it not to just jump back to the beginning because it almost works as it is this is the last frame that I animated and then this is the, the first but you see how everything kind of jumps back and the lighting changes very abruptly so I'm going to create a few more frames. Now, before I do that, I need to select all the frames I outputted and drag them to the trash because I can't add layers or change layers while the frames are outputted without affecting all the frames. Okay, so let's go to the very last frame I animated. Here it is. And then this is the next one I set up. Remember, I had jittered the background. You could see that, so I moved the background back. And I'm just sucking that bird in a little bit more, but I haven't moved the glaciers yet. So let's move those back just a little bit. Move the mist just a little bit. Move this one back just a little bit. And I'm trying to get closer to the very first frame, which is this. So this one actually should move less back, let's see. Yeah, so that looks about right. Then I need to move this one up. Okay, so let's review how I turn this into a frame. I go to the very top visible layer, hold down Option, say Layer, Merge Visible, Command A to select that merge layer, Command C to copy it, go to my stage, I'm at the top of my stage, so I hit Command V to paste it in, and then I can toggle between and see what that does. Yeah. All right, next. I hit Command D to deselect that merge frame. I delete the frame by hitting delete. And now I can move this one up a little bit more. And again, I'm trying to make it match this first one. Now I'm trying to get it set back to the beginning. So I'm looking at the little differences. So this needs to move up and over a little. What else needs to change? This needs to move back a little. And then this foreground piece needs to move in a little like that. And we're almost there with the elements. I'm not trying to match it exactly yet because I still have to close the, uh, the barn door basically. So I am going to now get rid of the wing of the sucked in bird, right? And I'm going to start reducing the tractor, tractor beam light. Reduce that a little bit. 
maybe even reduce, reduce the glow a little bit. And then let's play with the church roof. I'm going to go a little faster. I'm not trying to be subtle here. And let's play with that background shaking again. Just turn that on again just so it feels more intentional. And then lastly, I'm going to play with these texture fills a bit. It's because there's nothing else really happening, so you might as well play with the atmosphere and the lighting. All right, so let's see. It's going to go from that to this. Oh, that's too much movement of this one all at once. Okay, so hold down Option, Layer, Merge Visible, Command A to select it all, Command C to copy it, Command B to paste it in on top. There we go. Yeah, good. Next. Again, I'm trying to get back to the beginning to set it to reset. So the first thing I can do, deselect, get rid of that merge layer. And see where the foreground ice, the foreground ice is good, I leave that. What about this thing? I'm just going to move it up a little bit. Right. What's next? And pretty much leave it there. Uh, the background needs to shift back, right? So I need to go and take off the shaking background. Now I'm going to reduce the glow even more. I'm going to reduce the tractor beam even more, but not completely, just reduce its opacity. And I'm going to start to close the door, the roof. So it was there. Oh, let's reduce this a little bit. And now it's here. So that's my last frame. Now we're to here. Yeah, I like that. You see the lights dimmed almost completely now. The shaking background might be a distraction. We will see. And then um And again, the same size. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, and then I'm just going to play with the atmosphere a little bit more. And these are your puppets to manipulate. And then go to the very top, hold down Option, Layer, Merge Visible, Command A to select it all, Command C to copy it all, go to my stage at the very top, Command V to paste it in. See how that looks. Very nice. Okay. Go ahead and save it for good measure. And now I get to close the, the barn door for good. Deselect, delete that merged layer. Foreground ice stays where it is. This ice, remember I'm trying to set it back to the beginning. Looks pretty well set to the beginning in terms of the ice positions. Yeah, it's fine. I'm just going to leave it where it is. It gives it a bit of calm, change the atmosphere a little bit, take them down because they're a little heavy. Yeah, that looks good. Move the mist. Nope, not that one. 